Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Frankie Taylor, for ministering to us in music and all the team. Thank you. Let's give him a hand. Praise the Lord. I mean, there's a Holy Ghost in this house tonight. Praise the Lord. Give honor to Bishop Huntley. Been a hero in my world for so many years and so thankful. He got to talking earlier, and I thought if he wouldn't have mentioned my name, I was really wanting to meet the guy he was talking about. And give honor to him, uh, Pastor Lagon, uh, your district secretary, of course, your youth president, Cal Chavis. What a tremendous man of God. Let's give him a hand for all of our work. And what a great team you have. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm carrying a burden for this meeting tonight. God is going to do a work in this house. If you believe it, shall amen. amen. If you could grab your Bibles, if we could stand for the reading of the word, turn to the book of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13. It was an honor to my son, Darren. He travels with me a lot. I'm so glad he's with me tonight. Praise the Lord. It's getting a little bit tall. He's almost 14. And I've been 5'7 for about 100 years. I told him as he's getting a little bit taller, I said, when you get taller, you just bow your head to make sure you're not bigger than you. Praise the Lord. I love fair. Praise God. Isaiah 5 and 13 says, Therefore, let's read it together. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. I want to preach from verse 14 for the next little bit. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself. And open her mouth without measure. I want to preach for the next little bit. On the day hell should have kept its mouth shut. Right. The day hell should have kept its mouth shut. Could you lift your hands all over this building? Let's pray for the touch of the Holy Ghost in this house. Lift your voices with your faith. Come on, North Carolina District. Come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, to help us with your word tonight. God, I pray, Lord, let it not be my words, but your words. Let it not be my thoughts. God, let it be your thoughts. God, anoint me one more time to preach your word. I pray, God, that you would transform somebody's thinking. God, that you would deliver somebody from a dark place in this house tonight. God, I pray you help us one more time as we preach together. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord mightily. For your seat and looking back, two or three people say, Hell should have kept his mouth shut. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. There's been times in Scripture that it seemed that God allowed hell, if you will, or the enemy to swallow up the people of God. I find Scripture in Numbers chapter 16. It says, if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a, somebody say a new thing, and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up with all that are pertained unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men had provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words. I want you to picture this with me. If you will, let the grave clay asunder that was under them. And the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained to Korah and all of their goods. They and all that appertained that belonged to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. This is Korah and company who was causing trouble in the Old Testament with Moses, but God said they won't go to hell later. Hell's coming after them now. It seemed as if it swallowed them up alive in that moment. 
There's another place as I read in the Bible of this moment where it seems as hell comes to swallow up the people of God, if you will, and it's in the story of Jonah. It says, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against that city for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah, like a lot of us, rose up to run from the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa. And he found a ship there in Tarshish. And he paid the fare thereof. And he went, everybody say, down into that ship to go with him to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Notice that when you start running from God, you start going down. And then it's going to cost you something. And then you're going to go down again. That's why when you run from the will of God, and you run from the church, and you run from the call of God, it'll always take you down, down and down. You kept going down, but a storm came, and everyone on that ship got scared, so they cast lots, if you will, and, and his name come up, and they threw him overboard, and, and he was swallowed up. Jonah, a backslider. I choose the word prodigal. A man running from his calling. A man running from the will of God. A person running from the presence of God. Running from convictions. Running from what God is going to do. Is now in the waters of the sea. And something begins to happen. The Bible says that there was a great fish. And it swallowed up Jonah. Three days. And three nights, he was in that fish's belly. But something began to happen that I bring to you in this house tonight. That when he was swallowed up, Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of a fish's belly. Let me try it over here. Out of a fish's belly. He was swallowed up. Running from God. And he got swallowed up while he was backslid. He got swallowed up in a bad place. Can I tell you today that out of that fish's belly, he began to cry unto the Lord. He said, I cried by reason of my situation, my affliction unto the Lord. I'm about to preach to some PKs. I'm about to preach to some prodigals to tell you, you got to be careful running from God. you got to be careful running from the presence of the Lord. It's an old time conviction preaching. I'm going to preach it back to your call. I'm going to preach it back to where you're going to be a preacher. God's going to bring it back to be a Sunday school teacher. God's going to bring it back, back on the platform. See? I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And the Bible says, He heard me. Out of the belly of hell, cried I, but he heard my voice. I think it's amazing to me this backslidden Jonah finds himself swallowed up, and he called it the belly of hell. He was swallowed up, it seemed by his enemy, that in that moment of being swallowed up, it is what caused him and catapulted him to change his mind and to pray where God would hear his voice again. You see, when God speaks to you, it's always a good thing. Yeah. It seems like sometimes when you fall away from God, when you begin to pray, he said, God heard me, but I want you to understand what it says in verse 10. After he prayed, the Bible says the Lord spoke unto the fifth. You're praying a prayer for deliverance. And it seems like you can't get a word from God. Could it be that God allowed you to show up here tonight? And he hasn't spoke to you, but he's been speaking to your captain. He's been silent with you, but he's been speaking to your addiction. He's been silent with you, and he's been speaking to you.
I was going to die at a young age. I would never be used of God and I was a lost cause. I'd walk into camp meetings. I'll never forget what camp meeting I was going to go and I decided that day, I've never told this. I decided that day I'd stop in Kanawha City before going to the camp and I decided to hang out with friends instead of going to the camp meeting. My life began to catapult out of control and all that happened to me. Now I'm a young adult. I'm married to my precious junk that I love so much that I was swallowed up by hell. I'd show up when I could. Can you ever relate to what I'm I would go. Couldn't feel what they felt. And my dad's the pastor. I should be doing better. I wanted to be better. I just seemed like I couldn't get it. Maybe one service I'd feel a little something, but it just seemed like I was just a lost guy. Convinced in my mind, swallowed up. A voice would speak to me, said, you're going to die, young man. You don't have a future. And I was convinced of it. I'll never forget, I got off work. It was a revival. James Kirk, pastor, Heath, Ohio, was there preaching a revival with my dad. I came and sat down on the left side of the church, as I usually do. It probably still had cold dirt on my eyes. looked like I had mascara on. I'm walking in and sitting. I sat there and was having a prayer line of people was dancing and shouting, folks, this is all I've ever known, but I hadn't felt God in three years. I couldn't feel God. And I sat down. Brother Frankie, I sat there and I said, this is my last service. I'm done. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to come in here and act like something. I'm not. I'm a man's man. I'm not going to come in here. And I bowed my head down with my precious wife beside of me. And I remember praying this prayer. I said, oh, my God, if I could feel you one more before I could say time, the power of God came over me. you got to hear me. I didn't sit there. I had felt God in three years. I took out running. I went to the front of that church. I lifted my hands in the air. They laid hands on me and I began to speak with tongues. I was convinced I was a lost cause and my daddy was a pastor. But as soon as he laid his hand on my head and James Kirk laid his hand on my head, I saw a vision. And I saw me preaching. I was speaking in tongues. I went from lost to that. I'm seeing a vision of me preaching like this, like I am right now. It's kind of a mannerism we got me and my brother. I guess we just do this thing. And I saw it. And then I heard Bishop Hurley. Elder Hurley from years ago, I forgot about it. When I was five years old, he called me out where you are, son. And he pulled me to the front. He said, I was a little five years old. I'll never forget it. He said, David Bounds, you hold on to truth. God's going to use you mightily one day. And I forgot about it until that moment. And it echoed through my mind. Can I tell you, that night God transformed my life. All the chains I had on me were gone. Within three years, I was pastoring the church. It doesn't should have kept his mouth shut because God is going to deliver you tonight. I believe you ought to clap your hands and shout yes all over this. I'm not a big cold man or a night worker lost cause to preach the gospel. Within two more years, I get an invitation from Bishop Garlic. We go to Malawi. And I'm invited to preach. And it was like they, this introducing this man of God. I feel un undeserving. I stepped to the pulpit. Before I got there, I realized how in five years from being a lost cause, yeah. am I preaching a crusade to thousands? I do not take this life. I will never take what God's given me. I have a heritage, an apostolic heritage has been handed to me. But I, I'm going to send a message to hell right now. I will never turn my back on truth. And I preach to you, you need to get something inside you tonight. You say to hell might be saved for a lost cause. You only have to take me to Christianity. And you'll never find your calling. I come all the way from Parkersburg, West Virginia, to tell you you are not that that calling is still real. That property department you got in the tent it still exists. So step into your calling. Step into what God has called you to be. Oh, lift your hands all over this building. Tell to go to the 
a little nervous, or his girlfriend's a little nervous, I set up a Bible study with him. 
before I could get to any response, it's like we're getting to the place about the baptism. I love that part. He said, can you baptize me right now? because somebody had murdered his daddy when he was 12. He said, you know what? I need to make amends with my daddy's killer. So he wrote him a letter and started corresponding with him. I think it's amazing that we've got people like that trying to forgive it, the murderer of their father. We've got preachers who can't forgive one another. Corresponding with his daddy's murderer, forgiving. They became friends, corresponding back and forth. And he said, I remember, Pastor, I had a grandmama used to take me to church. I've got to find her. He got her number, called her. He said, He thanks everybody. Repent this baptism in Jesus' name and filling with the Holy Ghost. Because he was a Buddhist, among many other things. He was just trying to figure out life, trying to find his higher power. He calls grandmommy up. He said, Grandma, this is Justin. I just wanted to tell you that I've repented of my sins. I've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Spirit. She starts squealing. She said, Justin, I go to a Pentecostal church in Tennessee. I've been praying for you every day. Who would have thought to swallow up into a prison that there was a Justin who was one hundred of souls like him to die?
case you didn't hear me, stay by Satan. He would work to pick fights with Christians. People like you because he liked to fight. Y'all still mad about the shirt. <laughs> but you weren't there when he was five years old. And a neighbor molested him. He walked out on his porch at five years old and pointed up to heaven and said, God, why did you let that happen to me? For pastor, I don't have an answer. But all I can tell him is I can't really find that other than God can heal him now. And I watched as he had taken his life and do anything against God because he was angry at God. And here he walks in with patience, his girlfriend and their baby taken from him. I watch him in the middle of a worship service. It was only the second song across church is crazy. We're worshiping God. And I see he's in, the, he's in the aisle like this, weeping and crying, not knowing what to do with what he's feeling. And they're repenting of their sins in a worship service. And I, I looked at him and I said, hey, why don't we just go ahead and baptize some people right now? He walked down 21 souls that day. But when Carl went down, he came out of the water, speaking in other tongues. that God can't fix you. You have not been so far out of the world that God can't put it back together. You might be swallowed up, but God is speaking to your captor, Jonah. There is so much faith in this building right now, but you need to hear me. Don't you let anybody tell you that this generation don't want holy. Don't you let anybody, don't you let an elder, don't you let anybody from the world speak in your ear, don't you let hell tell you that this world don't believe in twice born of the water and the spirit, speaking in tongues of holy life, don't you let them tell you that. Since 2017, Parkersburg, West Virginia, it's not a large city, we have baptized. As of last night, they baptized three more while I was gone. We have baptized 817 since 2017. 817 souls coming off the streets, not switching churches, coming off the streets, not coming from one church, no, coming off the streets, coming out of the bars, coming out of the prison, coming out of dark places. I told you all that to tell you. Preacher's kid, please don't waste four years of your life like I did. Please. I said it last night. I said, why is some of our church people chasing things that the world's running from? I beg you, PK, who are you? I preached to you last night. Who are you, young man? You think you've done too much, you've looked at too much online. You've done too much and you let hell whisper in your ear. God sent me here to tell you, young man, young lady, that you haven't gone too far. You are not a lost cause. God is going to restore you to life. Don't waste another day. I beg you, don't waste another moment. Don't waste another month. Don't waste another year. If you want God to use you, I'm calling for you, PKs. You're here. And we're going to open this altar, but preachers, kids, where are you? You were scared because we live in a glass house. I've seen so much. I got confused and angry at times. I see my daddy treated bad and my mom. I see stuff I didn't like. I got confused. Don't let hell trip you up with an attitude. I'm going to ask everybody in this sound of my voice right now if you want God to speak to your captain. God's speaking and he's going to let you go out of that. I want you to come right now and I want you to feel this whole altar. And I want you to stand. And I want you to begin to pray. And I want you to let God begin to restore some things that you've lost. I 
Yeah, that's it, that's it. It's not too good to be true. Mom and Dad, Mom and Dad has been worried about the kids. Get up here. It's not too good to be true, but they're going to break through. It's not too good to be true. It's not too good to be true. One second. I, I, I want to give you something. Listen, listen. I'm being right where you are right now. Some of you are in a hesitation, doubting what God can do next. I want y'all to keep coming, but I want you to hear it. When you read the story of the prodigal son, you never find the father going after him. But you find him alone, about to eat of the things the world had without nothing, spending all of his inheritance. But one thing I do find out that he comes to himself and he comes home. He's released to come home. And he gets up and he comes home. And the father leaves. I read this story multiple times a year. Don't you hear? Multiple times a year. I love this. How many loves the story of the prodigal son? There's something that I've noticed about the prodigal son that I read it today and the prodigal son came home. You know, I read it last year and it came home. And the year before that, I read it. And he came home. I can read it next year, the year after that. Guess what's going to happen at the end of the story? Well, oh, that's amazing, isn't it? Because the problem isn't you coming home, it's when. If you'll come now, you won't have the brokenness you'll have in a year of God tears. If you'll come now, you won't have to deal with the stuff I went through in my life. Oh, thank you! Prodigal! Come home now! You will anyways! Could you lift your hands right now? And I want you to lift your hands and say, God, I'm released. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. You feel that? You feel that repentance has granted you? You feel that? Let God do it now. Come on, let's hit. God's doing something right now. God's baptizing with the Holy Ghost begin. Go ahead and begin to speak with tongues. 